the right, Shalom, all praise is honor and glory. As always, be it to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, Mahashem Rakakwadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew for the name of the Heavenly Father, being Yahweh, and that of his son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, being Yahweh Shai. These are the only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you've been given the Spirit to receive that knowledge or not. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Great Millstone, who have taught me this truth of the Spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, who do rule well today, and peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the nation of Israel, beginning with the 144,000 prophets prophesied to wake up to come back into the good graces of the Most High and begin to prophesy of this glorious gospel, man. All right? All the way down to the one-third of our nation prophesied to take heed unto these prophecies, to take heed unto this gospel, man. All right? And learn accountability and return unto the Heavenly Father. You see, to you, I say Shalom, man. All right? We're living in a very, very heavy time of prophecy as you see all these Israelites waking up to the knowledge of who they are, man. Making changes, you see, which in time will cause this entire universe to change. But it begins with you, man, you Israelites making changes to yourselves as you are the inheritors of this earth according to the prophecies, man. According to the promises, if you will. All right? But yesterday I was going into a live stream going in on the topic of uh you know we've been uh we've been given this wisdom man we're very very blessed you see because these people out here in the world man they have no clue what's going on according to these prophecies and they have no clue how to really conduct themselves out here man when all this hell breaks loose as it already is you're seeing them begin to panic not knowing what to do not knowing how to how to deliver themselves you see, which is why all of them are going to bow the knee to the oppressor Esau Edom versus stand firm and have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and his deliverance from this oppressor, man. All right. And that's why we've been put in this grace so we could learn to trust and believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and all his power and might so that we will have enough faith to overcome that time of Jacob's trouble, man. All right. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and jump into where we left off i don't got too much time man but you know i figured i'll you know uh finish off that piece and you know kind of see where the spirit goes um and lord will do another another one later but this is uh matthew 13 and 10 it says and and the disciples came and said unto him why speakest thou unto them in parables you see so why is it that the heavenly father was speaking to the to the people in parables he wasn't just telling them plain plainly what the what what was going on he wasn't telling them the plain answers he was speaking to them in parables, man. I mean, they had, they had to figure out what it was he was saying. Verse 11, I mean, if it's for everybody, why was he doing this, right? Verse 11, it says, He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. You see, because it's, it's only been given to those who the heavenly Father has chosen to receive it, man. All right? This thing is not for everybody. This is for the elect of the nation of Israel, man. That's whom the Heavenly Father is dealing with because through them, the Heavenly Father will restore order on this earth. In other words, he's going to use the quality to restore the quantity that will be destroyed on this side. Going on. But to them, it is not given. But to the rest, it's not given, man. It's not for everybody to know the truth. Everybody has to fulfill their role. Some have to be the blind. Some have to be the blind that's led by the blind. Some have to be the prophets. Some have to be the one third. Some have to be the wicked. Everybody's going to fulfill in their role to play in this prophetic movie of the Heavenly Father, which is playing out to perfection before our eyes, man. All right. Going on, it says. Verse 12. For who and actually before I grab that, I'm going to jump into another precept real quick, which is uh, Ephesians chapter one, I believe. Verse four. It says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. You see that, man? So before the world was created, the foundation of the world, you see, the Heavenly Father already chose who his elect would be, man. Who these prophets would be. Going on, it says, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You see? So he already chose these people that he would cleanse, man. 
verse 5, it says, having, and how did he cleanse, how did he cleanse these men? Going on, having predestinated us. So these people were predestinated. Their destiny was already predetermined. And this is the likeness of what that destiny is, right? Us unto the adoption of children by Yahawashai Hamashayak to himself. So he predestinated these men to be adopted back unto the heavenly father after being casted away, man. You Israelites were cut off. You see? You Israelites were done for, man. In fact, the book of uh, of Sanket Ezra's, the Sanket chapter, tells you that, that, that there would be no more remaining of our nation, man. You see? The heavenly father will cut us off. And that's why we're in the condition that we're in today. But... With that being said, man, the Heavenly Father kept his promises because he is not a man that he should lie by giving us Yahweh Shai. You see, a good precept for that is uh, Hebrews, the ninth chapter in the 15th verse. Show you how, you know, we'll go ahead and grab it. Let me finish this off. It says, by Yahweh Shai Mashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So he chose these people according to his will, according to what he wanted, man. He chose these people to be to come back to him through Yahweh Shai. You see, if this if the nation was cut off, how is it that they would return? The Heavenly Father prepared a a, a sacrifice, man. Yahweh Shai walked perfect in this flesh, and yet his blood was spilled to not atone for his sins as he was perfect in that walk, but to atone for the sins of the elect, man. Alright? Verse 6, it says, To the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood you see that man through his blood we've been redeemed redeemed from what from breaking the covenant going on the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace so let me go ahead and jump into that precept i was just referring to which was uh hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15 and it reads and for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament speaking of yahweh shai the messiah man he's the mediator of the new testament you see that a new testament would be formed because we broke the old covenant, you see? And now this, this new testament, all these, these prophecies coming to pass about this man, Yahweh Shai, who would come and fulfill prophecy, man. Who would come and be the only one to overcome, to, to loose the seals of this book that has been hidden. To bring our people back to life, man. And now through his sacrifice, <laughs> there will be life on earth, man. Going on, it says that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression. So he had to die for who? For the redemption to redeem, right? The transgressions, the sins, as we just read out of, out of uh, uh, Ephesians, that were under the first testament. You see that, man? Who was under the first testament? The Israelites. They broke the covenant, so the Heavenly Father formed a new covenant with this new testament that will end with the laws being written within these men he's perfecting these men so that they will govern this earth in righteousness man this is the gospel see they which is why i said in the beginning man you're learning accountability and they're returning and repenting right, going on and finish it off it says uh they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance you see that man so they which are called might receive that promise to inherit internally the, the 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 kingdom man this earth you see our inheritance you see and why is it eternally because those laws will be written within you and the, if the wages of sin is death and sin is the transgression of the law according to first john 3 and 4 then these men will not be sinning anymore these men will not be dying anymore it'll be an eternal rule man all right which is why the book of psalms says this here This is Psalms 82, in verse 7. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. You see that, man? You Israelites are now in a condition where you are dying like men. This is not, your, this is not the place you're supposed to be in. In fact, you are gods. Let's see verse 6. I have said ye are gods. You see that, man? And all of you are children of the Most High. So the Heavenly Father set up this nation. To establish his laws on this earth to establish life so this earth could prosper man all the things you crying about on the earth man the answer to these problems are are the israelites coming back into power you see which we have been blessed to be called we have been blessed to be part of this calling man 
as now we might receive the promise of eternal inheritance what we just read out of Hebrews 9 and 15. Now let's go ahead and jump back to Matthew and we'll finish this uh, finish this here that we were reading in uh, verse it's like a 13 in verse uh, 12 it says for whosoever hath to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance but whomsoever hath not from him it shall be taken away even that he hath so the heavenly father is about to turn the tables around on this earth man therefore speak I un speak I to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear not neither do they understand and in them it is fulfilled the prophecies of Isaiah which saith so this this this, this is a, a fulfillment of prophecy how do you have that understanding going back to Isaiah which saith by hearing ye shall hear and by and shall not understand and by seeing ye shall see and not perceive for this people's heart shall wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear for truly I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye have hear and have not heard them so there you go man again we have been blessed to have this knowledge as it is written wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and that's exactly how we're going to get through these times man all the rest of the world looking for answers, running for sanctuary, seeking Alex Jones and Esau's counsel, consorting witchcraft, trying to speak to rocks, whatever the case may be. You see, we've been given the, the answers here, man. We'll end it on this verse. Isaiah 33 and 5. Yahweh is exalted, for the for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Right? He's given us judgment and righteousness. Man, going on verse six, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. That's what's going to get us through these dark times, man. The wisdom and knowledge, and having that righteousness, man, that righteousness from Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai Salaki. It says, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So with that, little woman's edifying. All praises, honor, and glory be to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai.